Hey guys, so in this week's portfolio update, we're going to talk about why I bought Johnson, Johnson & Johnson. So if you watched my last video last week, I sold Uber. And I know Uber is up a lot right now. It went up a lot since I sold it, but I mean, that's the way it goes sometimes. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes you just miss out. And it's better than the opposite, right? It's better, better than selling at a loss. But anyways, let's go over the positions real quick. Bank of America, we are up 12.27%. Cloudera, we are up 0.57%. Cisco, we are down 5.52%. Uh, I do have some thoughts I want to share on Cisco, but they have earnings tomorrow. I'm recording this on Wednesday. You'll be seeing this on Friday. Uh, after I see the recording, the um, the earnings, I'm going to make a video about Cisco and share my thoughts on it. But we'll see how it goes. Facebook, we are up 51.97%. Intel, down 2.93%. Johnson & Johnson, our new guys, up 0.07%. Realty up 28.60%, Pfizer up 15.23%, Qualcomm up 85.87%, Revolve up 64.07%, Sony up 24.52%, AT&T down 0.76%, Tapestry up 87.87%, and Tesla up 2.98%. That gives me a total equity of 27000 $791 and then 32%. And we are up overall 18.69%. A $4,000 gain. Pretty nice. So a while back, I made a video on Johnson Johnson, which you can watch up here, where I go into detail in the company. I talk, I talk about what the company is about and all that stuff. And I'm not going to rehash all that in this video. But the short version is that Johnson & Johnson is a very multinational company that's been around for a long time. It has its hands in a lot of stuff, from the pharmaceutical stuff to over-the-counter stuff. I mean, it's it's a, not only is it a household name, but it owns companies that are household names. Like we're talking, we're talking products like Tylenol, Neutrogena, stuff like that. Now, since that video, there are some things I found out that made me eventually finally pull the trigger on the company. So the first thing I want to point out is that this is a dividend king. It has been paying and raising its dividends for over 50 years. It has a 2.72% dividend yield and a $4.04 .04 annual payout. And a payout ratio of 50.40%, 50 which is not bad, not bad at all. But that's not the main thing I want to show you. So year over year, its revenue has been going up consistently. I mean, it's not exploding in revenue. This isn't like a huge growth company. I mean, at this stage in the game, Johnson & Johnson has already grown pretty much all the way. But, you know, over year by year, the revenue is going up steadily. But that's not the that's not the best part. Take a look at this revenue from its latest quarter versus last quarter. Now, most companies reporting revenue uh, uh, lately, especially during this pandemic, most of them are seeing drop-offs versus last year. Johnson & Johnson does not have that problem at all. I mean, it, it sort of fell off a little bit last quarter. But, you know, everyone fell off last quarter. I'm just saying this one. I mean, Johnson & Johnson is bouncing back. I mean, it is a great thing to announce to say you are doing better than this time last year. And that's not only as revenue, but also as gross profit. This right here is what eventually made me pull the trigger. Like, this is a country, this is a, not only this is a well-established, you know, very safe, comp, very safe place to put your money. But, I mean, there is some growth there. It is growing, especially during a pandemic. That's what made me pull the trigger. Let's take a look at this balance sheet real quick, too. It's cash and cash investments. It's total assets has been going up steadily quarter over quarter. That is phenomenal. That is absolutely phenomenal. And, and let me show you this right here. It's uh, cash and investments, $30 billion versus its debt of $32 billion. It has almost as much cash and cash equivalents and short-term investments as its long-term debt. That means if it really wanted to, it could liquidate this and pay off almost all of its debt. That is phenomenal. This is a very safe place to park your money. And this is what I'm talking about. Yeah, Uber was a, you know, Uber has been growing and stuff, but I mean, it's it's kind of messy. Like Johnson & Johnson, it's well established and it's very safe. And I like safe. $170 billion in assets versus 106 in liabilities. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yes, it did go up. And his debt did go up, but I'm not mad. It is, I mean, its cash equivalents are definitely keeping up, keeping up with it. And look at the cash flow it's getting from its operations. This this past quarter versus the last quarter. These past quarters, I mean, this is we're talking pandemic era, but this is phenomenal. This is better than it was last year. I I can't look at this and then not invest. 
I can't look at this and not invest. Take a look at Yahoo Finance for just a few valuation measures. It's got a forward PE of 15.72. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. The PEG ratio, I mean, it's a little high, but I mean, we're not in the Johnson & Johnson for the growth. I mean, we're more in it as a safe place to store money with some growth and, of course, dividends, definitely. Looking at some analyst estimates here. Now, analyst estimates are definitely not gospel, but they are kind of fun to look at. As far as this year, uh, they are expected to go from 8.68 to 8.01 and then up to 9. Again, I mean, it is growth. Not, you know, not the biggest growth spurt in history, but... I mean, it is a steady path upward, and that's I kind of I kind of like to see. I would kind of rather see that than you know just uh, an explosion of ups and downs, right? But again, I'm not looking for a huge growth out of this company. I did, and it, so if you watched my earlier video on Johnson and Johnson, I came up with a or sort of a target value of $168 or somewhere around then. I can't remember the exact number, but uh, any any price under that number, like I figured, is fair game for buying. And I'm I'm definitely going to keep buying Johnson and Johnson. I bought six shares today. I, I I plan on buying a lot more. I plan on lot buying a lot more over the couple of weeks, especially if the pro if the price drops some more. Like I wanna I want to build Johnson and Johnson into a big position because I feel this is a very safe place to park my money. It'll earn some nice dividends over the span of my investment. And I'll see some growth out of it. Yeah, so what do you think about Johnson & Johnson? Yeah, it took a while to record this video. I mean, I, when I started, it was light outside, and now it's not. But anyways, what do you think? Are you buying some Johnson & Johnson? Uh, if you already have Johnson & Johnson, Johnson, are you holding? Are you buying more? Are you selling? Let me know in the comments. But anyways, take care, have a great day, and eat your vegetables.